On this edition of Lexington Now, the Town Branch Park design is unveiled, a new section of trail opens, and a vigil for peace. I'm Neil Noah and welcome to Lexington Now for the week of September 26, 2022. The official design for the long-awaited Town Branch Park has been unveiled. The privately funded project was designed with the input of over 16,000 people in mind. Here's more. Thank you for being here to share this incredible milestone in the creation of Town Branch Park. Building a community destination takes time, energy and resources and we've been at it for quite some time but because of the generosity of so many people today we share the final design of town branch park shaped by the input of literally thousands of lexingtonians who graciously shared their knowledge ideas and imagination with us town branch park is going to lift up our entire downtown and take it to the next level. It's a destination park. It will draw a steady stream of visitors, both those from outside and those who live here. In a few days, October 13th, we will be cutting a ribbon to officially open Town Branch Commons Corridor. You know the one where all the horses are playing? The trail starts at Town Branch Park, runs through downtown, and links 22 miles of trails leading out into our beautiful bluegrass and beyond. Uh, this is something that has been uh, built, brewing for seven years, as Allison mentioned, and really comes out of the vision that you all have shared throughout the community engagement process. So we're going to begin at the high street entrance. So if you were to park in this parking lot just off to our side here, walk into the park, you would come in this amazing new entry to the park that comes under a tunnel, the Manchester Street access to LCC, and then brings you over a pedestrian bridge. That tunnel is a great opportunity for new art. And once you get through that tunnel, you can see the stage open up this amazing amphitheater space where you can host events from 5,000 people to just a couple hundred community folks there for an amazing event. And as you walk through the site, we're going to take you on the circulation path that brings you through lush planting and enters the park. So here you can see where the path uh, joins the Town Branch Commons Trail in a planted plaza that we call the Ted Bassett Path of Service, commemorating and honoring uh, community service in this community. Um, here you're coming along the path and you're opening out to a view of the recreation lawn, a great place to throw a frisbee and have a picnic on a daily basis, overlooked by a piece of public art uh, called First Impressions. And now you're turning into the heart of the park plaza, a great place to have a coffee or a snack with friends, swing on the swing benches in the shade, um, and really have a wonderful social heart with the plaza. Now, here you're coming to the Destination Adventure Playscape. This is going to be the most inclusive and most uniquely Lexington space uh, for families and caregivers alike to uh, enjoy the Lexington landscape. This is the water playground, uh, which is an opportunity for children and families to get wet um, and stay cool through long, hot Lexington summers, but also a chance to build um, engineering skills and creative thinking um, as they dam and channel water um, just like you might if you were able to play um, in a natural creek bed in the area. Um, so you can see the opportunities to pump, dam, and channel water um, all set into a landscape that is uniquely Lexington with limestone um, and plantings which are native. Lots of sensory opportunities here. So now we're coming down a universally accessible pathway into the main part of the adventure playground. Um, this is a space where children of all ages and abilities can play together. Um, there are many ways to access uh, challenges of different varieties and types. You can see that the, the playground is situated around a main tower we call the Grist Tower, 
Uh, this takes its inspiration from some of the grist mills along the Town Branch Creek and offers four levels of exciting climbing opportunities for children and then a screaming, shrieking, exciting descent down a 27-foot slide um, into the heart of the playground where you can see, again, um, slopes to climb up and to slide down all really nestled into a natural Kentucky landscape. Um, this is really going to be a unique place um, to come and stay and play all day. So now we're coming back to that main circulation path that Zach noted it comes all the way through all of the park amenities and connects them. And we're coming up and over the dog park. This is a wonderful place for dogs of all types uh, to play together safely. There's areas for small dogs and large dogs, um, grass areas, agility areas, shady places for uh, the humans who come along with dogs to sit and socialize together, um, and, and a really great place to walk your dog. Finally, we're gonna take you back to the namesake of the park, the creek itself, where we're removing all the invasive species, cleaning up the water quality of the creek, and really reconnecting it with the program in the park. You're gonna have amazing views of this creek from multiple places in the park. And last, as you stand atop all over Lewis Way, you can look above the entire park and see how it nestles into the community, how this park truly is the vision of the community. Thank you all. A new section of trail has been opened, adding to Lexington's ever-expanding trail system. We were there for the ribbon cutting. Today we're cutting a ribbon on a new section of trail here at Masterson Station Park. Another great park project in what we are calling the Year of the Park. Over the past year, we have installed several new playgrounds at parks, announced new park land, a new pirate ship coming to Woodland Park Aquatic Center. We've opened new trails and a new dog park and so much more across our city's parks. And there's more to come. So it's a great time to get out and play in Lexington parks. Today's ribbon cutting opens a trail section that will connect the Masterson Station neighborhood and playground with the Town Branch Trail. This is an opportunity to have an expanded access to a playground, a new picnic shelter, and the popular splash pad. And this is all about connections. I know the neighbors in the area are very excited to have this new multi-use trail. And there will be much more in our future, including trails at Jacobson Park, Whitney Young Park, Gainesway and Wildwood Parks, so much more to come. This new connection that we're, we're standing upon right now uh, in Master and Station Park has been a priority of mine uh, for the past several years. And it's, a pleasure, it's been a pleasure working with our parks team, seeing it come, become a reality. I want to thank especially Michelle Kasiniak and Brian Roach uh, for all their hard work and community outreach on the project. As we see, as well as seeing that it was completed so quick with our ARPA funds. Having this trail completed means a safer and more accessible means of getting, the, getting to, from the Town Branch Trail to the Masterson Station Playground. A playground which has recent upgrades of its own, as mentioned just a minute ago. We have a new shelter, a lot of new amenities, and we have quite a bit of new, uh, new playground equipment almost completing the park for us. Every day, we're working to make it better and better. Thank you again for all being here, and I look forward to seeing you all on the trails. It is an honor to be here today in Masterson Station Park, a beautiful green space beloved by residents and visitors for the last 50 years. On behalf of Polexiden Parks and Recreation and Director Monica Conrad, who could not be with us today, I want to thank the Mayor, Councilman Josh McKern, and all the other council members for supporting City Parks with the American Rescue Plan funds. These funds, as has been said, are adding new trails in parks as well as, well as constructing additions like the one we're at today or celebrating today. Trails are a critical and strategic way that cities can improve both park access and park equity. And that continues to be one of the top priorities for our department. We hope everyone enjoys this improved access to all the wonderful amenities that Masterson Station Park offers. 
thank you. So uh, now it's time to cut a ribbon. So let's let's cut this ribbon and open this up. Let's do it. All right. We ready? Three, two, one. Cut the. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> awesome. A prayer vigil against gun violence. When we come back. Have two ways out. When fire strikes, deadly smoke can fill your home within minutes. That's why the USFA wants you to plan and practice home fire drills. Draw a map of each level of your home showing all doors and windows. Discuss the map with everyone who lives with you. Practice your home fire drill at least twice a year. Make sure all doors and windows that lead outside open easily. Push the smoke alarm button to start the drill. Try feeling your way in the dark or with your eyes closed. Have at least two ways out of every room. If your first way out is blocked by fire or smoke, you can use your second way out. If there is smoke, get low and go. Crawl quickly under the smoke to your nearest exit. Close doors behind you and gather at a pre-planned outside meeting place where first responders can see you. Call 911. Remember, get out and stay out. Never go back inside for people, pets, or things. Welcome back to Lexington Now. Lexington held a prayer vigil downtown to stand up against the current epidemic of gun violence. City officials and faith leaders gathered at the memorial for victims of violence for the vigil. Tonight is a time to come together to pray for those we have lost, to pray for their families and friends, and to pray for our community. It's also a time to look to the future. It's a call to action in our community. Lexington is a very special place because of the very special people who live here. And we need each of you to get involved, learn more about how you can help, give us your ideas and insights, speak out, it will take all of us working together to end this violence that is infecting our city, our state, and our nation. Jeremiah 29, 7 says, Seek the peace and prosperity of the city which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because it's, if it prospers, you too will prosper. Uh, Frankly, our church is in an affluent side of town and we aren't seeing the violence just outside our doors. But let me say this, however, if it impacts this community in any way, it impacts us as a church because we care, we care for this city, we care for the people of this city and any way we can help, we're here to do that. Following the Sharpton pogrom and the violence in Crown Heights in Brooklyn in the early 90s, Mayor David Dinkins visited my personal mentor and the foremost Jewish leader of the modern era, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. And he asked him, what can we do to bring our communities together? The Rebbe responded, as long as you think you're bringing communities together, you'll never achieve your goal. You have to recognize we are one community. It is our city, it is our community. Each and every one of us are a part of it. And we are unified in that community. And only then can we bring peace. I'm pleased to be standing here with so many community leaders who have done just that, who have put themselves forth to serve our community. Lexington is blessed with all the pieces of the puzzle that we need for this community to achieve. There is an idea in all the Abrahamic faiths that the beginning of everything that we see was in a garden. A garden where people expected to have production, they expected to have produce, and there was a certain discipline that had to be maintained in order for the garden to be cultivated. Because everything in the garden was adhering to the will of God. And the benefits of the garden depended on the, the occupants of the garden to also adhere to the will of God. We're all familiar with the story whether we be Jews, Christians, or Muslims. 
A longtime contributor to the beautification of downtown is being honored for his efforts by Celebrate Lexington, formerly America in Blue. Today we're honoring a new Celebrate Lexington champion. And he also makes his home in the East End. Thomas Tolliver has been involved with many of the projects the city has undertaken here in the East End. Isaac Murphy, Art Garden, improvements in Charles Young Park, Phoenix Rising, exploring the neighborhood's history. And I've known him for several years because I first met him in a neighborhood meeting where we, he was um, talking about and asking that the city partner on banners throughout the East End to honor important people here. He's a modest man, but he works like the Dickens, and he'll always let you know how he feels about an issue. So Thomas has put down deep roots here in the East End, so it's appropriate that we plant some daffodils in his honor. And he has definitely become a community champion here. Indelible marks, marks that cannot be easily removed. My uh, etched brick on the exterior wall of the Lyric and the art piece at Isaac Murphy Art Garden. And come November, I'll have to add another item to that list, a daffodil drift on the hillside right where this cameraman is standing. And I can't wait for that to happen. Let me say just a word about our neighborhood, where I do most of my work. Great change in the East End. Houses that had sat empty for years on end are now being refurbished and resold for prices that just boggle the mind. This is resulting in a lot of new people coming to our neighborhood, and I don't see that changing in the near future. I, for one, believe that change is good. Change is inevitable. As songwriter Bernard Eigner said in his haunting masterpiece, everything must change. Anybody know that song? Everything must change. Nothing stays the same. The young become the old and mysteries do unfold because that's the way of time and nothing and no one goes unchanged. Now, I could sing that for you if you really wanted me to, but, but we don't have time for that. Um, there's another line in that song that says, winter turns to spring. And when this winter turns to spring next year, this hillside will be awash and thousands of daffodils, all while paying tribute to those who sought to do a little preservation amidst all the change in East End. What an indelible mark indeed. With Council on Fall Break, we've got a shorter slate of live meetings on Lex TV this week. And as always, you can watch our gavel to gavel coverage here or streaming online. And remember, for the most accurate and up-to-date information on all city business, check out our website at LexingtonKY.gov. Here's this week's meeting coverage. That's all for now, but as always, you can keep up with us on social media, check out the latest traffic updates on Twitter at LexRex, or catch our live traffic cams on LexingtonKY.gov. For all of us at Lex TV, I'm Neil Noah, and that's it for now.